What's up guys and welcome back for uh, the latest episode in my series on life as a corporation director. This is episode 7, so we're ticking along nicely in the series now, uh, starting to get into the swing of things. Um, and as always I am trying to be in a different skin, in a, um, uh, you know, a vaguely relevant chip to what I'm doing. Um, so here we are in the practice, I was in the practice last time. Uh, but this is a second skin, um, and it is the Capsulier Day 17 skin. I'm not entirely sure what SOCT stands for, but this is the skin. I quite like it. I, I do prefer the um, the other one, Ice Cloud Investigators, that's in my, other vid my last video, but it's still quite a nice one. Practice is a, a pretty good look. It's so big. Like, I can't zoom out. This is uh, in the station. I can't zoom out or in. That's how big it is. Anyway, um, enough about the praxis. Um, what have we been up to this week? Uh, rec recruitment still been going quite well at the corporation. Um, numbers are still steadily rising. Um, let's just have a quick look at numbers. We're at 124 now. Um, and I did just issue invitations to two more uh, characters so um, this number will change again um, and hopefully be higher this time next week um, so that's really good uh, some of it is coming from this channel which is amazing um, it's really cool that you guys are liking what you see through this and want to reach and um, want to join so um, yeah that's that's really exciting um, and thanks for doing so um, still really enjoying the engagement. I am being a bit slow to respond. Uh, I know I am. There's been a, there's a couple of things going on. Um, we've got some, uh, you know, a guy in a C4 that's um, part of our coalition and wants to work more with us. And I'm trying to engage with him properly and get across there to work with him more often. And you know, we're coordinating. We're going to go do incursions together and things. But there's also a group in a C5 that are reaching out and um, are looking to form an alliance or at least do some form of joint ops. Um, so I'm, I've been too slow to respond to them, and if they're watching, I can only apologise. But um, you know, there's things like that happening uh, pretty regularly, and it's trying to balance the the right sort of workload and what would be good for our members without uh, you know uprooting them or disturbing them too often and things and just getting ships in the right place because that's what, one of the things with um, wormhole space that I'm, I'm finding is uh, um, as I say yeah just having ships in the right location at the right time because you know with this chap's C4 wormhole um, there's no high sex static obviously for a C4 uh, at least I don't think there are for any I don't think but don't quote me on that but there isn't for his so he has to scan down a, a chain connection and then we can't really just roll in with the battleship and like hope for the best if we want to run sites or whatever. So you need to stock that wormhole first, you know, leave some mining vessels there, leave some combat vessels there, exploration vessels, but then they'll just be sat, and that takes some time, right? Because those ships you have, you have to accept that for the most part they'll only be used when you're in that wormhole. Um, so we're still going through that process, trying to get that stocked. Um, he's being incredibly helpful, it's Necromancer. Um, I've mentioned him before in this series. He's being incredibly helpful and generous and is offering a, um, to sort a lot of that stuff out for us, but it just takes some coordination. Um, and similarly, the joint ops for the C5, they'll be the same sort of uh, restrictions. Um, yeah, as I said, joint operations without being, as I dis we discussed with this, these people in the, in the C5, joint operations without being like sort of there without like living in the hole and being part of the alliance are really quite difficult to coordinate um so but it's all cool stuff everything um it's just mo it's moving forward like we would uh like we we're hoping to be honest you might have noticed our tax rate has gone up by two percent so it's now four percent um that's a result of a long discussion between the board um, justifying it amongst ourselves and making sure that it's the right amount and then taking it to our members at the town hall um, discussed it with all of them uh, made sure that they were aware of the reason why the tax rate was going up 
um, and then you know left it a couple of weeks it's been a good couple of weeks since that to um, with reminders so that if anyone had any issue with it they could bring it to us and um, uh, and express the problem and why and we'd, we'd, we'd take it on board well the nice thing is that our members were 100% in we had no dissenting members for the um, for the tax rate rise which is which is awesome everyone wants to help out which is which is excellent you know um, and just so viewers are aware the reason for the tax rate rise um, often uh, is uh, is not to line the pockets of the directors um, are we have a few structures dotted around I won't go into too much detail but we've got a fair few structures and our CEO basically for the most part is single-handedly funding the fueling of those structures um, and you know that's a, a good couple of billion is sink a, mo a month for him uh, but then as our member count rose we were able to keep a keep an eye on the income that we were getting from taxes um, and were able to calculate that if we went from 2% to 4% we should be able to cover almost all of the fuel costs for the structures from the tax uh, within the corporation and so that's excellent and then by um, and so that's as I say that's not to line pockets that's just to stop shipping cash um, and then as you know as the member count grows and we have more and more active members and that tax income goes up we can then reduce the tax rate just to keep the keep it so that basically it, it can fund the fuel costs for the structures and as we get the our internal production of fuel blocks going um, and get all that up and running properly which I think we're making very good progress on at the moment from what I can gather we may well be able to reduce tax rate again as a result because of the reduced costs of fuel by producing it internally so um, yeah, so that's that's that. Um, oh, also just here on war eligibility. If you have structures, you are always eligible for war. That's sort of how it works. Um, I did. I saw another video a little while ago that uh, was talking about recruitment. For the most part, the video was good. I actually can't remember. It might have been TD, TDK Pyrostasis, something like that. Um, he did a video. Uh, for the most part the video is very good it was about um, how you find a good corporation if you're a new player um, it, yeah it was good I enjoyed uh, liked a lot of the information in there thought it applied well um, but he did mention that uh, you know if a corporation says they have structures and then you have a look and they're not war eligible they've probably lied to you that's not strictly true um, and most corporations with structures in and around high sec now will have holding corporations set up so that um, so that their members aren't directly affected if their holding corporation, if someone wants to take the structures down they'll have to declare war on that corporation that owns the structures um, so then any member that's in that corporation would be at war and you know would be risk anywhere in high sec or anywhere in the universe but anywhere in high sec they would be not be safe they could be shot down by war targets so by keeping your structures in a holding corporation or several holding corporations you reduce the disruption to your members when um, when inevitably one day they get war decked um, so that's just worth uh, worth knowing if you're a newer player and are looking at um, joining corporations they're not necessarily lying to you if they say they have structures but are not war eligible they just probably have them in a holding corporation like we do um, so yeah so that's the state of affairs in terms of member count um, I have no update on the mining from Monday uh, unfortunately I had to work a very long day on Monday and was unable to make the operation in the evening um, and I wasn't, because I was hoping I could make it, I wasn't able to give enough notice to have anyone set it up and run it. So that's on me. At some stage, I need to find a backup um, mining FC for Monday evenings on the off chance I can't make it um, at short notice. But, you know, I, I know some, some people did mine anyway, but that was, 
we decided obviously that wasn't going to be a uh, corporation organized event and so they could keep all the ore for themselves and you know but so that was a disappointing start to the week for me this week um generally work's been very busy at the moment so i'm not being able to play as much as i would like um and that's part of the that's also impacting on my being slow to communicate with people um because i'm trying to when i am online i'm trying to engage with my corporation and you know do enough and get stuff going um so it, it, it's at the expense of uh people reaching out for a lot more long-term things um so that was monday so it was a bit disappointing tuesday i we're still, like, for the Doctrine fits we've been looking at. Um, I'm trying to manufacture a bunch of them, um, obviously, well, and more generally, um, I will be, once we've properly got the Doctrines established, um, we'll be looking at setting up an industrial wing to try and keep the uh, Doctrine fits in good supply. Um, so, I, like, at the moment, I'm specifically looking at our... Uh, just doing some drake manufacturing um so i've worked out what uh minerals we needed and then what all we would need as a result um a, a, a good tool a tool to do that by the way if anyone is interested um is i use the lazy manufacturer um it's con dot space k h o n dot space um to work out material requirements for um, manufacturing. It's a really good tool that you can just use quickly if you can't be bothered to set up spreadsheets and things. And then if you want to work out the what, um, what ore you need to get those input materials, so the minerals, I, I use um, Fuzzworks Compression Calculator um, the Fuzzworks website is just phenomenal, the number of tools on there, but I use the compression calculator on there for um, for working out what ore I need to set my orders up for and things. So trying to, trying to do that entirely on, um, uh, basically, you know, as an income generation for our members. So, because of course I could just go to market, buy the drakes, or I could go to market, buy the minerals, build the drakes, could go to market, buy the ore, reprocess the minerals, build the drakes, but none of that is money going to the corporation or our members. Um, that's all going to some randoms on the market, and I would like to try and avoid that where possible to keep the money amongst friends, you know. So um, we have, so the high sec ores, we had a good, a good amount of that from our mining operations in stockpile, so we had all the Velspar we needed and a good chunk of the Scordite and Pyroxyres. Um but the null sec or the wormhole ores um, we didn't have so at our market in the wormhole I set up buy orders for uh, compressed bisto, arcanor and uh, gneiss um, and hopefully our members will start filling those I do need to push that a little bit more um, just make sure people are really aware that that's available and um, and is an opportunity if they mine in the wormhole they can sell the ores immediately um, to buy orders in the marketplace that have to haul or reprocess it or anything um, and also they're helping fund by doing so they're they're funding the um, uh, ship ship replacement program for doctrine fits which is which is excellent so need to really get some uptake on that um, the only thing that's missing from that is um, Noxium. Um, at the moment, uh, I believe that's a low sec exclusive mineral because um, it's in dark ochre and homorphite and possibly jasper, those ores. Um, so I don't think you definitely can't get it in wormhole space, I believe, um, and not high sec. So that I did go and collect from the market I just picked up the Noxium because I don't have a solution to that at the moment um, obviously I could place buy orders in the in the wormhole for our members but they might never get filled because then our members would be need to be willing to dive into low sector to mine it 
Um, so that's my uh, industry at the moment. Um, we're still moving structures. Uh, they take a while to decommission. Once everyone has, you know, you have to give plenty of warning for people to collect their stuff and move out of the station because in wormhole there is no asset safety. Um, and then, then it takes a week from that point. Once you start unanchoring, it's then a week before you can actually go and pick the spe pick the station up. So we we are still moving structures around and um, making sure things are set up properly. Um, I say moving them around; they're actually just being decommissioned to reduce uh, costs. So they're being taken down because um, they're no longer needed. Um, and then the facilities that are in them can be installed at our existing structures. So we're still waiting on a a rig for our reprocessing array. Um, and what else? Uh, we've got the moon drill. It might just be the rig for the reprocessing array now. So I can't. I don't want to reprocess any of these ores because at the moment we can only achieve. I have no implant at the moment, and um, we can only achieve 71% refine. So we need the rigs. Uh, we should be able to get that up to 81. I think it's 81 um, because it's just an Athenor. If we upgrade it to an Asbel, then I think we can get to 84. Um, or do I mean a Tatara? I mean a Tatara, I think. And then I can get up to 84. And then with an implant, 88. You can max out about 90, but you need a Satoyo, I think, maybe then. Um, or maybe I've just named the wrong structure again. Who knows? But we should be able to achieve 81 without implants in, in our current wormhole as long as we get the rig. So anything we reprocess now would be a waste. Um, and just on that subject, uh, at the, uh, we have our moon drill, um, which I mentioned in the last video, that was cycling. Um, it fractured on Thursday and was available for everyone to mine, lasting just 48 hours. Um, uh, unfortunately, that's, that was timed with the event. Uh, obviously, we didn't know in advance. But the uh, Yule Festival event spawned, I think that was Thursday. Um, so most of our members, including me, have been out of the wormhole off um, uh, running event sites and things. And that has meant the moon has been left uh, not mined and was largely wasted. Um, once we checked the logs, I think we mined about 15 million isk worth. And most of that was me on my ult. Um, so obviously I'll give everyone the benefit of the doubt that that's not been, that's not waste, that wasn't, that's, uh, that's not going to be representative of the amount mined because of the, uh, because of the event, but I will be, um, pushing out a couple of mails and just pushing the fact that there will be moving ore available occasionally and it's not, it obviously, as I say, as I said in the last week, it's, um, it's basic moon ore, so it's not hugely lucrative to mine. But you know, if there's no ore belt or anything, then it's good to good to do. And if members want access to moons, they will need to mine it so that we can justify the um, expense of running the the moon drill, not just to lose the assets in space. Um, I'll come back to the event in a second, but uh, I can go to Wednesday night. We did some. Uh, wormhole combat sites in our neighbouring C3 as a fleet. Uh, that was a really good evening. It was our most successful one yet. We had a good C3, um, good number of sites that we could run, um, and we burnt through. Uh, yeah, our, our highest total yet as well. We're talking close to half a billion in blue loop um, in two hours. So good, uh, pretty good going and that's split between the members that take part um, including the guys who run security so people watching wormhole entrances and things instead of actually shooting rats um, and again that's just really good fun on, on comms with everyone just chatting away and shooting some sleepers um, just to earn some earn some cash uh, and some like immediate cash as well like it, you know there's nothing anyone has to sell the blue that goes to the corporation 
the members just get paid cash and the blue loot is shipped off to market to be sold instantly because it's a set price so it's just instant money running sleeper sites which is nice um, and then that brings us on to the Yule Festival event which I'm sure you're all already taking part in uh, if you're not or, or are unsure of what the sites are I've done a couple of videos so far the first of which was on um, the high set combat sites which I put a link above um, and I've been, I ran a few of those on Thursday and Friday um, and then I also did a video on the high sec mining site which is now above um, that basically to see what that was about and because I want to rack up these oh it's not going to let me open it because, it's, because I'm in a, in a wormhole um, yeah it's not going to let me open it oh here we go because I want to rack up the points for these so you can see I've done a few to get to the Abaddon um, but the easiest way to do that is to try and hit all of them uh, so I've got the mining one that I wanted to keep doing because they get harder you know I have to go to Naltec if I want to complete any more of the combat challenges so might be limited by how far I can go but you know um, so that did that video as well and then I was going to do an exploration video um, on the site as well because you can also there are hacking sites um, which you can see here exploration challenge uh, that was so I was running that yesterday on Saturday and it's the weekend so it's the first weekend of the events and a huge surprise but there was so much competition for all the sites and the hacking is literally just first come first serve you can't nick the loot from anyone like you can the combat sites um, so and they're very difficult to scan down um, with a Astro with sisters probe scanners um, you still had to go to the smallest size the 0.25 AU scan range to actually be able to scan the site down so I got a few but wanted to understand the sites before recording a video and then uh, then I was just hopping around all over the place trying to find any combat uh, any uh, signatures to be able to scan down for the event and it was, it was excuse me it was okay it was worth doing I made a reasonable isk in the time I was running it but it wasn't brilliant for recording and so then I decided to take a um, a filament down into low sec so they a part of their rewards for this are filaments they look like reindeer's antlers. Uh, where are they? These things. So you can pick these up. And so I took a um, a one person low sec one down into low sec in my Astro to go and try and scan down filament uh, exploration sites in there. Again, I found a couple and they were very good, um, but didn't record and so I want to try and do more of that this week see if I can find any more some of them like this is a 10 person filament I don't really understand why you'd want to yeet 10 people to a high sec site but whatever um, I, I, does anyone know if there are null sec filaments I've not seen any yet but obviously um, if I want to go and do the null sec combat site the easiest way to get there would be with one of these um, so if anyone knows if they exist please let me know um, and so yeah this week I want to produce an exploration video for the for the event um, and then maybe we'll look at doing some of the stuff in Nullsec and whatever depending on where our wormhole opens up I guess um, I did unfortunately it's related to the event but also also nothing to do with the event it's just a mistake on my end um, I lost my Gila that's uh, that I was running the events in um, that was because I was running a site and on the Saturday and some competition came in so like a paladin turned up and was flying it um, and so I was like, you know it's unlikely I was going to beat the paladin to the final loop um, and then an Iki Tursa turned up um, he was suspect, so presumably he'd been nicking stuff from other people 
taking it from you took took it from their wreck or, or uh, from their MTU or something. Um, he entered the site and locked me. It was flashing yellow, so I locked him up as well, just to see what he was up to more than anything else. And was trying to carry on running the site, and then just made the mistake uh, of instead of setting my drones on a rat, I set my drones on him completely by accident because I had him locked up. Um, and that then obviously just made me fair game to him. And turns out Iniki Tursa is incredibly strong and just wrecked me, um, as you might expect. Uh, but so I lost my Gila through that. Just a simple mistake whilst running a site that meant someone could PvP me in high sec with no consequences. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a shame. I need to go and replace that now. I also want to get Stratios so I can do more um, in... Um, if you're... if you've explored my channel uh, elsewhere, um, I a little while ago now I was running a series on um, co uh, combat sites in my Stratios. I made it as far as the rally point I think. So I was doing it for Angel Space just because that's where I was. But So I would got to the Angel rally point and when I was doing the Angel port I lost my ship to um, pirates because you know you're in you're in low sec uh, to find the port. Um, but I want to get another Stratios so that I can carry on that series um, at some stage. That's my plan anyway. Um, so that's that's probably it for this week. Um, I don't think I have much else to add. I'm hoping that work starts to settle down as we move towards Christmas um, and I'm able to get some more game time in. Um, obviously a bit of a heads up over Christmas my game time is going to be to a minimum. I'm actually heading down to my family because we're allowed to. Uh, lock, the UK's lockdown is being eased for um, for the Christmas period. So I'm going to head down to my family and I won't be taking my desktop with me. Um, so I'll have to decide whether or not I'm taking my laptop with me. So I'll be able to play the game but I won't be able to record uh, because it's definitely not good enough to record and play the game at the same time, that thing. So over the Christmas period, depending on how long I'm down there, I might miss a Sunday. Um, so just a heads up on that. I'll try and let you know uh, whether I'm going to or not, whether it's just a post or something. I'm not entirely sure how these things work. Um, oh, and I did also find out that I haven't been accepted onto the EVE Partner program at this stage. Um, I have responded to CCP just asking, you know, if they can let me know exactly why. Uh, because depending on how you view the metrics, depends on whether or not I'd be accepted. So presumably they've gone rigidly with you have to have a minimum of a thousand views per video in the last three months, which I don't have because a lot of uh, this series and others uh, haven't reached the thousand view mark yet. But if you did it as an average, uh, so if you average my number of views per video over the last three months, I do have over a thousand. I think I've got 19,000 views from 13 videos, something like that, because some videos are more successful than others. You only have to look at the event video I did uh, recently. That's at 1,200 views, and I only posted that on Thursday. So uh, it just depends how they're viewing the metrics, but they've rejected me, so I've asked for some clarification. Um, and I don't think I can try again for three months. I think that's the rule. Um, so as my viewers, if, you are, if you'd like to see us get onto the partner program so we can get those exclusive skins, um, do some giveaways and stuff, and just generally have access to the devs and um, CCP and be able to get some information and ask questions and things, if you guys are interested in that and would like to see me get there, um, we need to get my channel up, get the views going, and uh, we've got three months to do it, I guess. Um, see if so. Try and get try and get us accepted into the next thing. So, if I I haven't I've, I've never asked this before because I, I I don't want to. But if if you are able to share the channel, if you like the channel, and you're you're a subscriber, if you're able to share it with whoever you think might be interested, and um, 
just generally try and we can we can try and grow the channel together if you think it's worth growing obviously if you don't uh no hard feelings don't do it um but if you think if you think the channel's worth growing then any help you can give me is is awesome and uh, we can we can keep this going um also i am looking to do some giveaways uh if anyone has any ideas as to how best to do that i've seen a couple of examples um Okay, uh, looking at, I saw Strange Nets channel, and he was doing a giveaway where he dropped a can in uh, just somewhere in randomly in space, and then offered clues through the video um, as to where, as to lo as to the location, so that his viewers could track it down, and the first person there got the prize. That seemed like a pretty good idea, but it does mean that obviously the people that view the video first, so have your notifications turned on and everything get out of the advantage um, I, I've also seen people just post their in-game name in the comments and you randomly pick one I don't know how uh, how to convince viewers through that process that it is truly random and you're not just because you know unless you can prove that you probably get some backlash people will say tell you it's rigged etc um, so yeah, if anyone's got any ideas on YouTube, because obviously Twitch streaming, you can do giveaways all the time, and they our mechanism set up to ensure that's all fair and random. But yeah, if anyone has ideas for how to do giveaways on YouTube, uh, I'm, I'm all ears. Uh, I'm looking forward to being able to do some. Um, yeah. Well, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'm going to leave it there, and we'll catch up next week. Um, Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.